Can vitamin C cause kidney stones? Well, before we go any further, let me just say I'm not a doctor, and you should consult a doctor if you have any concerns about your health. Anyway, so, can vitamin C cause kidney stones? Well, the person that wrote this article on the Healthline website seems to think so. It says, oxalate typically exits the body via urine. However, under some circumstances, oxalate may bind to minerals and form crystals that can lead to the formation of kidney stones. The article cites this particular study, Clinical Practice Calcium Kidney Stones. There's actually no mention of vitamin C here, but it does recommend drinking plenty of water and reducing sodium and protein intake. Back to the Healthline article, it says, Consuming too much vitamin C has the potential to increase the amount of oxalate in your urine, thus increasing the risk of developing kidney stones. In one study that had adults take 1,000 mg of vitamin C supplement twice daily for six days, the amount of oxalate they excreted increased by 20%. They are referring to this study, Vitamin C Supplementation and Urinary Oxalate Excretion, which proves that gram-level doses of vitamin C increase oxalate excretion but doesn't prove it definitely increases kidney stone formation. Back to the Healthline article, it says, High vitamin C intake is not only associated with greater amounts of urinary oxalate, but also links to the development of kidney stones, especially if you consume amounts greater than 2,000 mg. This refers to this study, Safety of High-Level Vitamin C Ingestion, and also this article in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition titled Safety of Vitamin C. Both of these sources say that vitamin C increases oxalate excretion, but neither provides conclusive evidence that vitamin C causes kidney stones, so it seems that it's just theoretical rather than actually proven. Back to the Healthline article again, it says, Reports of kidney failure have also been reported in people who have taken more than 2,000 milligrams in a day. However, this is extremely rare, especially in healthy people. This refers to this study, Fatal Vitamin C Associated Acute Renal Failure. This says that high doses of vitamin C can cause fatal kidney toxicity in people with existing kidney problems, but this is rare. So it seems that it's not really something that most people really need to worry about, especially when you consider that taking high doses of vitamin C can actually be beneficial. I saw this article on the Orthomolecular Medicine News Service titled What Really Causes Kidney Stones and Why Vitamin C Does Not? And again, I'm not a doctor, I'm just passing on information, so don't sue me if this turns out to be incorrect. But this article says that there are five well-known types of kidney stones. Calcium phosphate stones are common and easily dissolve in urine acidified by vitamin C. Calcium oxalate stones are also common, but they do not dissolve in acid urine. Magnesium ammonium phosphate stones are much less common, often appearing after an infection, They dissolve in urine acidified by vitamin C. Uric acid stones result from a problem metabolising purines. They may form in a condition such as gout. Cysteine stones result from an hereditary inability to reabsorb cysteine. Most children's stones are this type and these are rare. It also says, The oxalate vitamin C issue appears contradictory. Oxalate is in oxalate stones, and oxalate stones are common. Asorbate, the active ion in vitamin C, may slightly increase the body's production of oxalate, yet in practice vitamin C does not increase oxalate stone formation. Vitamin C in the urine tends to bind calcium and decrease its free form. This means less chance of calcium separating out as calcium oxalate stones. Also, the diuretic effect of vitamin C reduces urine concentration of oxalate. Vitamin C increases oxalate but inhibits the union of calcium and oxalate. Oxalate is generated by many foods in the diet, including spinach, which has 100 to 200 milligrams of oxalate per ounce of spinach, rhubarb and beets. Tea and coffee are thought to be the largest source of oxalate in the diet of many people, 
up to 150 to 300 milligrams per day. This is considerably more than would likely be generated by an asorbate dose of 1,000 milligrams per day. The study we are discussing didn't tabulate the participants' intake of oxalate, but on average they had relatively high intakes, several cups, of tea and coffee. It is possible that those who had kidney stones had them before the study started, or got them during the study due to a particularly high intake of oxalate. For example, the participants that took vitamin C may have been trying to stay healthy, but the subset of those who got kidney stones might also have been trying to stay healthy by drinking a lot of tea or coffee, or by eating green leafy vegetables such as spinach. Or they may have been older people who get dehydrated, which is also very common among men who are active outside during the summer. Among the most important factors in kidney stones is dehydration, especially among the elderly. One of this article's key references is another article on the Orthomolecular Medicine News Service from 2005 by Steve Hickey, PhD, and Hilary Roberts, PhD, titled Vitamin C Does Not Cause Kidney Stones. This says, In Massey's study, 29 stone formers and 19 non-stone formers were supplemented with 1 gram of vitamin C twice each day, After five days on a low oxalate diet, the subjects were challenged before breakfast with 136 milligrams of oxalate, including 18 milligrams oxalic acid. They remained on the low oxalate diet for the remainder of the day. Of the 48 people, 12 stone formers and 7 non-stone formers had an increased total oxalate excretion of greater than 10% after supplementation. However, the number or size of kidney stones did not increase. There are two important studies cited by this article. One is Intake of Vitamin B6 and C and the Risk of Kidney Stones in Women, which says that large doses of vitamin B6 may reduce the risk of kidney stone formation in women, and that routine restriction of vitamin C to prevent stone formation appears unwarranted. The other study is a prospective study of intake of vitamin C and B6 and the risk of kidney stones in men, which says, These data do not support an association between a high daily intake of vitamin C or vitamin B6 and the risk of stone formation, even when consumed in large doses. It's also possible that getting enough vitamin K2 might help prevent kidney stones due to its ability to prevent calcium accumulating in soft tissue. And you can find out more about that by watching my previous video, which is all about why you should always take vitamin K2 when taking vitamin D. Okay, so we've established that high doses of vitamin C do not cause kidney stones. So the question now is, how much vitamin C should you supplement per day? Well, the Vitamin C Foundation recommends that everyone should routinely take 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day, divided into three separate doses of 1,000 milligrams. If you're pregnant, they recommend double that amount, and if you're under stress or fighting infections, they recommend a lot more, anything from 20,000 milligrams all the way up to 300,000 milligrams. For example, for the common cold, they recommend 8 grams, that's 8,000 milligrams, every 20 minutes. At the first sign of cold or flu, begin taking at least 8 grams of vitamin C as ascorbic acid every 20 minutes for 3-4 to four hours until bowel tolerance. This is when you start to get loose bowels as the body starts to try to get rid of the vitamin C it doesn't need. Although you don't have to wait until you get full on diarrhoea. If you notice yourself passing a lot more gas than normal, you can probably stop there. Anyway, it goes on to say, if symptoms recur, continue smaller dosages of 2 to 4 grams every 4 to 6 hours for 10 days to prevent recurrence. And again, just to emphasise, I'm not a doctor, I'm only passing on the information I found and giving you my opinion. It's your choice what you put into your body, and if you're ill or you're not sure, please see a doctor. I take no responsibility for your health. But having said that... What I personally do is mix 1,000 milligrams of pure vitamin C powder, also known as ascorbic acid, into a glass of water and sip on that over a couple of hours, making sure to also rinse my mouth out with some plain water after each sip 
to avoid the acid staying on my teeth. You can easily buy vitamin C powder online, and I found this particular one that's one kilogram for only $25. At three grams per day, that will last you nearly a whole year. If you would like to buy that, please click the link in the description. If you do buy through my link, I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you, which will help me to continue making these videos in the future. Anyway, until next time, I wish you the very best of health.